Dr. Katherine Smith, I'll be your moderator for this class session. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of His eternal purpose pattern and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign, foreign countries. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, our Son, and the Holy Spirit as contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the word our son is Elohim. This has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Saul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name. But it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that's made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just as Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Now Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you 
that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being. That is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walk the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preference of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consisted of a most holy place, holy place and court round about. These three compartments make it up the one tabernacle pattern. We go about in this school to show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have ten primary aims or constitutional objectives of the Institute and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sect, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to escapate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation in faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is none other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. Our scripture lesson is Luke, the 24th chapter, read by Dr. Daphne Thomas. Let us bow our hearts and minds in prayer. This morning, our gracious Master, we do thank you for allowing us one more opportunity to come and to learn of you in truth and in reality. We appreciate the things, Heavenly Father, that you have shown us since being in attendance at school. And Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. 
thank you, Heavenly Father, for taking care of us. Thank you for opening our eye that we might see. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us this morning, giving us the health and the strength to be present here today. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless those who are here and those who are unable to attend but do have that innate desire to be present in one of your classes. Bless every school that's open in thy name. Lead us and guide us in the way that you have set forth for us to go. And Heavenly Father, have mercy upon our souls that we might live. Give us this day, Heavenly Father, an understanding of the more appreciation, more thankfulness, more humbleness. Heavenly Father, give us the long suffering and the patience that we need to endure. These and many blessings we ask and we give thanks through your son, Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture lesson is Luke, the 24th chapter. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible, critically compared, excuse me, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late E.B. Trana, the Scripture Research Association, repent, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. Luke, the 24th chapter. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of Yahshua. Of Yahshua. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember <laughs> how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Miriam Magdalene, and Joanna, and Miriam the mother of James, and others with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about seven and one half miles. And they would talk together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Yahshua himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Yahshua of Nazareth which was a prophet mighty indeed in word before Elohim and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the supper. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things? to enter into his glory, and beginning at Moses, in all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. 
and they drew nigh unto the village whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it, and brake and gave it to them. And immediately their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, Yahshua is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was of them in breaking was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Yahshua himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed, not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have ye here any food? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which was written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved the Messiah to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing Yahweh. I read the entire 24th chapter of Luke. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 I like to say good morning to the class and to begin this lecture. Our first speaker will be Dr. Olivia Dobbins. Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> We're playing the finger right. game. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I watched that show just to, you know, just to get a laugh. Uh, but uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It, it truly is an honor and a privilege to be able to give any kind of reasonable testimony about the wonderful. <laughs> we listening to the song. What a marvelous! What a wonderful thing to have something to say about Yahweh, because He is truly shown us when we talk about you used to say out there in the world i looked at my hands my hands look new and it did, you know they not now they, we, did, they did they did too <laughs> you know but that he has healed us and now we see with the eye of understanding the the wonderful works of yahweh so yeah i watched the prices right now <laughs> i saw him hollering and screaming and <laughs> jumping and they was they was just overjoyed and that's the way that that we are to feel especially down here at at this time okay um what i wanted to get to was um the kingdom the kingdom of yahweh is righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit mm -hmm. So anyway, if the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy, then we ought to be jumping just like those people are at the prices right. I haven't read anywhere 
that the kingdom is anger, turmoil, upset, discourse. Right. You know, that's not it. And the whole thing uh, of understanding that everything that we've been learning uh, to the law and to the testimony, you know, and, 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 and please, I, I love John and Tim just as much as anybody <laughs> else. But we can make it a, a sing song. We can make it just like like the cheerleaders. Two bits, four bits, six bits a dollar. You, it's just it just becomes a chant. But understanding that those are precepts, they point to something spiritual. The natural points to something spiritual. And when we look at the children of Israel, how that Yahweh promised them in the promise of Abraham that they were going to inherit this land, but there was a condition. But first, they got to go down. And they're going to be spitefully entreated. He didn't say, I don't know what's going to happen to them. He said, they're going to be spitefully entreated. But afterwards, I will bring them out. And they're going to have that inheritance. Mm -hmm. And when we go through that, and it's so so beautiful to let you know that this man had a stupendous vision. You could ask somebody today <laughs> about the inheritance on either side of the Jordan River. People can paint all the charts. Then <laughs> Daphne gets mad. <laughs> I do too now. Everybody got a chart. Yeah. All kind of colors and stuff. But look, we got green here and green here. Yeah. Why? Because that is pointing to some of the tribes got their inheritance on this side of the River Jordan. And the rest got their inheritance on this side. Now, some people can get twisted up in that. And they'll say that, well, I'm in heaven already. I'm in the kingdom of Yahshua already and I'm waiting for you to get in the kingdom. <laughs> I've heard all. You you name it, I've heard it. Uh, but look, they receive their inheritance. It says to inherit eternal life, what, afterwards? Now. No, now. So that's the inheritance on this side. But don't you know, the inheritance was not given out. It did not come into effect those men of war had to go over and fight right. with the other men of war and all of them received their inheritance at one time in the same time. Right. So that's just a type and a shadow of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They received it all at one time. So we should be, if we've inherited eternal life now in the kingdom and the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy, we ought to be hollering and skipping uh, <laughs> like the people and on the Price is Right. And, and look, all of us won't be emotional. All of us won't be vocal. I've said it many times. Yahweh, Yahweh, and it's not a negative thing, Yahweh plays us just the way He wants to. I'm going to give you a Romans 1, 19 and 20. There are two stringed instruments there's no way you could, I'm going to put a picture in, but there's no way you could miss a great big string bass mm -hmm. for a violin. There's no way. But there is a sister, if you want to call her a dark sister, to the violin. And if you're not close up on it, you would assume it is a violin. But it's the viola. Viola got its own clef it even reads in. So, the viola is like a bigger and it's a, a deeper voice and a richer voice mm -hmm. than, than a violin. Violin sings with that high, almost like crystal clear sound. The viola is a darker. Even when she sings the same notes, it's darker. It's richer, like a dark wine, just like the difference in a uh, one of those cultura or lyric sopranos with the real, 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 real high voice, like, mm -hmm. uh, or those robust voices, almost like like a Pearl Bailey. She had out to a contra, contra out to. <laughs> so you could take that viola and you could you could whip it like twenty meter team borax. That that viola will never sing like the violin. But you put the two of them together, what you got? You got harmony. 
and then you bring their bigger brother, the, the cello in that goes Ooh, between yeah, your legs, yeah. and then you get that string bass. You put them together, you got harmony. That's mm -hmm. why we have mm -hmm. different speakers. Everyone got its own so. pitch, its own timber, its, its, its own uh, voice that it brings to the choir. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we gave another analogy years ago. Uh, I can't, you know, we, we, and I was telling Dr. Smith, them ites, I appreciated that, <laughs> uh, listening to the other people. Uh, the Amorites, the yeah. Perizzites, the Hivites, and the, but I, I always said them Amorites is when you checking yourself. Am, right. am I right? <laughs> <laughs> them ice was biting me. <laughs> them ice was biting me. And that's what happens to us sometimes. I can't preach like Peter. I can't pray like Paul or whatever. You know, we get to measure ourselves by ourselves, not realizing that Yahweh is the voice. And if he doesn't want to sing, he's not going to sing. Right. And we gave an analogy of how that you have a big old choir and you know how you do that, uh, you know, you sing the song and then you get into that breakout, that breakout section, you know, and one come in, one voice come oh, in, yeah. then another voice come in, <laughs> then another voice come in and just keep adding. Yeah. Now supposing, supposing somebody singing a wheel and 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 somebody else saying da 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 and your part in the foot. <laughs> it adds to the overall. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a little or a lot, we yeah. have a testimony of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And since I put my name down this first, I'm going to get on it too. <laughs> uh, we had read Luke 24 chapter. Mm -hmm. A lot was covered in yes. Luke 24. We usually drop on down to Luke 24, 25 when we talk about the two mm -hmm. on the road to Emmaus. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a lot spitting in my head. Um, still thinking about, still thinking about some of the comments that people put out there on our YouTube. Still thinking about some of the things that I've heard over the years that people just don't believe that Yahshua the Messiah did the things I'll point here or here. Mm -hmm. Did the things he did, said the things he said, and sure enough, they don't believe that he rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. Now we can sing that song just a closer walk with thee. That didn't work. That's why when, and we read in Luke 24, when they went back with the report, mm -hmm. didn't he say beforehand, I must go to Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Were they in Jerusalem? <laughs> yes. yes. I must be spitefully entreated. Yes. In other words, taken from judgment hall to judgment hall. Mm -hmm. I'll be put to, I'll be killed. Yes. And here come the one. I'll raise again the third day. If they had one, two, three, they pulled up on that one. When the women came and said he is not there, they should have been howling and hooping, saying, <laughs> What is he coming back like he said he would? He rose just like he said he would. But it didn't. There was trouble. There was perplexed. Perplexed. There was dismayed. They disbelieved. And then Peter running down there. You would think Peter running down there to rejoice. No, Peter running down there to, to check this thing out. He didn't believe it either. Uh, they just could not believe it. It is utterly impossible. But look, when you go to the law and the prophets, and that's what he did with them. And beginning at Moses, ought, ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things? What was all of this about? Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things? And to enter into his glory. It didn't end with the death. It didn't mm. end with the burial. Right. And it really didn't end with the resurrection. No. no. To enter into his glory right. is going to be the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That is him bringing forth seed. Seed, bearing seed. After his own kind. But mm. see, you got to go back, you know, mm. all of these things in Genesis. We can get hung up, not us, but the world can get hung up on how can there be a plant kingdom on day three and the sun in the sky wasn't placed in until uh, uh, four, <laughs> day four. The seed on the third day mm -hmm. represents the seed of Abraham coming forth, mm -hmm. a three days journey, what, to and through, and the seed coming forth. 
Yahshua the Messiah, three days and three nights, and he was that promise. See, because like over in the so-called New Testament, it said that there was a promise, but not unto seeds, plural, mm -hmm. but unto seeds, singular, and that seed is Yahshua the Messiah. So three days and three nights, and what the seed, what, has to come forth. Mm -hmm. Why was he 4,000 years from Adam? You, you could just ask him, why was it 4,000 years from Adam? Because the sun was placed in the sky 4,000 years. This thing, this thing is so tight. Uh, when you don't practice it, it slip away. Uh, 400 years. Now, 4, 440, 4,000. Right. All the principles of that fourth day. Right. Uh, 400 years from... The promise of Abraham, the seed came. Mm. Yahshua, the son of Noah. Mm. Meaning he wasn't the son of Joseph. Right. Uh, Gad, Naphtali, right. Asher, <laughs> Reuben, none of them. He was the son of Noah. Appeared down here in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Stayed there 30 years. That's how you get the 430. Come the seed brings them out. Mm. Yahshua the Messiah comes 4,000 years from Adam, which is the first Adam, and he's the what? Second Adam. We wouldn't know these things. These are mysteries. Don't you know that if the world could, these schools, would we would be busting out. We, a, a house couldn't hold us. We, we'd, have, we'd be like the seminary schools. Mm -hmm. if, if people could get that. Well, see, they can't. <laughs> Because we're going to use the true name. And that's going to cut them off right at the mm -hmm. past. When we don't go along with it. They right. can't accept the mysteries. Uh, and this great gospel. Because they can't. Give, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it right there. Uh, I was listening to a vessel. And they were saying. No offense. They were saying. The facts will keep us. The facts will draw us. No it won't. No it won't. Because if facts. <laughs> drawed and kept, then we'd be a big edifice. Okay? Because we preach the same facts to everybody, friend or foe. So why is it that some stay and some can't wait? You can see it. Some are polite. Others, you can see it in their face. They are twitching. And then some have to just run on out. Just just almost like they say, just, just run out, put their hands on their ears. It's because Yahweh has preordained or predestined, mm -hmm. called you by name mm -hmm. to be a fellow heir and a recipient of the Holy Spirit. And that gospel, that truth, that those facts, mm -hmm. when it's preached to you, and I love the way we was dealing with it last week, quickens a memory. It quickens mm -hmm. something. We're not able to just quite put our finger on it, but it, right. it quickens <laughs> something. Mm, spiritually so we say, I know that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know, okay, okay, uh, okay. Uh, so no water baptism? Well, you know, the power was real good. You know? <laughs> and then some people's testimony, don't they say, I ain't never. Now you have to hear this from people, they be so polite. Mm -hmm. I had a good time. Uh-huh, yeah, I will be back. And they think it in their head because they get up on the floor and say it. I ain't never. never. Never no more going back down there to that place. Right. That's right. And the next class, they have to testify that they stepping up in there. <laughs> in their head, they say, I said I wasn't coming back. And they come and they take a seat. And they're insulted some more. You ain't never had a right thought. Everything that you were taught out there in Christianity is just wrong. And in the old days, we just we didn't sugarcoat it. It's just a lie. You sit there and you say, well, Oh, my mama, my grandmama, I ain't coming back. You storm up out of there, you fume all week, and then you that, that, Now, these are people's yeah, testimonies. Yeah, right. no. Find they self getting right. dressed when they get when they become conscious. They yeah. find they self yeah. in the mirror getting dressed mm -hmm. and say, Where am I going? Oh, I guess I'm going to class. <laughs> Shows the power oh, of Yahweh right. mm -hmm. that he'll, he'll lead mm -hmm. captive That's captivity. Right. right. So it's not about just things on the chart and things right. in the book that you can put your finger on. Because I've put my 
finger on things in the book and then went to the person and run my hand up under between their face in the book to see where their eyes were and I had to have they fell out or something, you know? Because when I saw it, I hollered, oh man, no J, you mean Jesus was I-E-S-U-S and then in the small parenthesis it says, uh, a Y E S H U A, a Joshua J O S H U A. I was, I said, whoa, there it is. I showed this person and they just sat there. I said, oh, their eyes must not be working. <laughs> we talk about one of the two in the bed, one will be taken, one will be right. left. We're looking at the end. Just look around the classroom, one will be Absolutely. taken and one will be left. <laughs> Even those that professed mm -hmm. that they were of us. Yes. But the scripture just said they got to go out. So that you can see they never was of us. So in Luke, he tells them, shouldn't the Messiah to have suffered these things? Before coming in here, I don't need to ask a show of hands because we was all basically in the same boat. Come um, New Year's, many churches had the, the uh, whatever they called it, the New Year's watch the service watch or whatever. Service. Okay? And then going into that next day, you're supposed to be rekindled. You make all kind of resolutions. I'm going to get up. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to eat less. I'm going to love my neighbor. We just have all kind of ambitious lie, lie, lie. We just have all kind of <laughs> ambitious uh, resolutions. Absolutely. And then one of the most popular ones read is we're going to read the Bible. The Bible. <laughs> Starting where? Yeah, at the very beginning. <laughs> okay. Although I didn't go to church, I, I was there for midnight walk sometimes with my friends, and I joined them in that. Uh, next day, we're going to start reading in Genesis 1 and just, just read and read. And next day, Genesis 2, read and read. That's right. Genesis, next day, Genesis 3, read and read. <laughs> And sometimes you might, uh, uh, somewhere along the line, you fall off. And then the end of the year come, you back in the watch meeting. Yep. <laughs> and then you start back January 1 reading Genesis. Well, you know, sometimes you just really stick with it. Because th these are many people's testimonies. They said they would get as far even as Chronicles. And then in Chronicles where it say, and he begot. And he begot. They say that's when they got up. It's, it's when they got to all them big gods, big gods. Or they skipped over past all the begots and tried to pick it up again. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of our vessels, Darvin, used to used to just stay on Billy Graham. He brought the, brought the little uh, clipping in. Oh. Where somebody said, I wanna I wanna make a conviction to start reading the Bible, where should I begin? Mm -hmm. And yep. he said the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So it is. Okay. Now we've we've demonstrated it with the book. When you open up your Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> You gonna start that far down in the book? That's like the last what quarter of the book or eighth of the book, and you think that you're gonna come to an understanding. Now, the so-called New Testament is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How many are eyewitnesses? Ooh. Uh, John, 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 and Matthew, because Yahshua run up on I, I use vernacular. He run up on Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector, so that was in them days. Yahshua chose Matthew, and John, of course, is John the Beloved. Well, what about Mark? He was a companion of theirs, and Luke was the physician. That was writing papers, mm -hmm. old Theophilus, old Agrippa. Uh, I just love the way he uh, get get Luke one one and one, and somebody else get Luke Acts uh, one and one. Just Luke doing one some history, one. cause we wouldn't know these things. People say, you, well, don't don't, don't let them ites bite you. Get you some raid. <laughs> don't let the ites bite you. For as much as many. Uh -huh. have taken in hand to set forth in order 
a declaration because Yahshua the Messiah's life and ministry set the town, set Israel's teeth on edge. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, now you think about this. Here's a man that is unpopular that the that the the uh, rulers, the religious rulers of those days stirred the people up to holler, crucify him, rose again the third day. Now this is the power of Yahweh. Outpoured the Holy Spirit. And the fact that there were still some people preaching about this Yahshua Messiah, it said, uh, didn't it say that about Peter and John? They turned the world upside down. Yep. Talking about Yahshua the Messiah. That should show you the power of Yahweh. Uh, that 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 uh, who you crucified, mm -hmm. but Yahweh raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. Though they set guards out there, <laughs> sent his two angels, knock him out, and roll a stone away. Mm -hmm. But we know that he rose a quickening spirit. But you got to have something physical to understand a spiritual principle. So the angels roll the stone away the third day, and he comes forth. And the preaching of Yahshua the Messiah upset the whole apple cart. Mm -hmm. So here's Luke. He said, many people are talking about this. Mm -hmm. And we can't get heads or tails of how this thing went. Mm -hmm. Read. For as much as many. Many. It's just the talk of the town. Mm -hmm. The one that two talking about it on the road to him yes. is. Right. Read. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration. Not all just bits and pieces. Put it in order. Read. A declaration of those things. A declaration are. of those things. So, so uh, um, uh, don't they do that when, um, oh my goodness, somebody's on trial now. I won't call his name. And they took statements from people. What are those? Those are declarations. Yes, are. And then they put them in chronological or timeline. So that's what Luke is doing. He's taking all these things. He's going to make a declaration. He's going to put it in time. And he's going to research it. Because that's what they do in a deposition. Mm -hmm. And when, when they have uh, the person on the stand uh, and the other attorney is talking to them, don't they call that depose? Yes, they they are trying to upset that witness and discredit that witness. Or they're challenging it to see if it is a true witness. So Luke is doing that. I'm going to make a declaration. Why? Because I'm going to see if this thing is so. I'm going to challenge it. Read. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. They're surely believed among them. Oh, he didn't become a believer now. Us. <laughs> Read. Even as they delivered them unto us, uh -huh. who from the beginning were our witnesses. See, somebody else had delivered to us mm -hmm. that our witnesses had to deliver it unto us. Read. And ministers of the word. Uh-huh. It seemed good to me also, mm -hmm. having had perfect understanding of all things, from the very first. How could he possibly have perfect understanding from the first? You can't. You cannot. Except yes. Yahshua get in you. Mm -hmm. We used to talk about how that lo I come in the volume of the book. That's the Old Testament. Uh, and then uh, we would say that the life and times of Yahshua the Messiah uh, is a biography. Uh, meaning that somebody, Luke is writing about Yahshua, Mark is writing about Yahshua, uh, John is writing about Yahshua, and then we, we dropped the bomb. The song said, we dropped a bomb on you because they couldn't write until after they received the Holy Spirit because he had already said he's going to bring back to your remembrance whatever he has said unto you. So if he in them is writing these accounts, mm -hmm. then it is him right. writing his own life story. Mm -hmm. And that's called an autobiography. Auto. Mm -hmm. right. But when you don't want people to know who's writing it, what do you call that writer? A ghost, a ghost writer. writer. 
<laughs> See, Holy Ghost Rider. All of these things, it just make me laugh. Yahweh just got this stuff. He got, he got you coming and going. Just yeah. little bits, little, here's another little trinket. You know, it's like that, what is it, Pandora. You know, here's another little trinket. Another little jet, another little gem, charm. little charm for your wristband. <laughs> Read. It seemed good to me also having, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order, in order, most excellent Theophilus, uh -huh. that thou mightest know mm -hmm. the certainty that you of be those. assured of a certainty. Mm -hmm. Read. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Mm -hmm. There was in the days of Herod. Okay, now here comes, here it starts. Mm -hmm. This is where we go. And, and it comes Christmas time. In the days of Herod, in the wise men. Mm -hmm. so Luke, Luke is writing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go over to Acts 1 and see if Luke's story has changed any. Acts first chapter. The former treatise have I made. What is the former treatise? Luke, <laughs> the, the book of Luke. <laughs> Read the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus. Right to the same one now, O Theophilus. <laughs> this part too. <laughs> of all that Yahshua began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments unto the apostles. He had chosen, mm -hmm. to whom also he showed himself alive. That now, nah, that's what we was reading in Luke twenty four. He's showing, showing himself alive. Read after his passion mm -hmm. by many infallible proofs, mm -hmm. being seen of them forty days, forty days, mm -hmm. and speaking. See, sometimes we have to read these things to, to just verify, because yeah. we'll say you tear it on earth forty days. Yeah. You know, sometimes we need to just read it, because sometimes doubt. Well, say, well, is it really 40 or 39? Right. <laughs> Read. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. After his passion. Read. By many infallible proofs. Many infallible proofs. What did he do? He made them know who he was by the breaking of bread. Just open up their understanding so that they could know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Read. Being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the king. Mm -hmm. And being assembled together, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Yeah, we, don't we say that they tarry in Jerusalem until, until they be endued on or endued on high? Right. Right. But wait for the promise of the Father, mm -hmm. which said he, ye have heard of me. And no, and nowhere, I'm, nowhere in there did he say wait. And then start having elections. See, that's our problem in the, in the IDMR. We just we just came, you know. We got to vote. We got to vote. We used to tickle me, vote and, and hold office and fight over holding yeah. office and uh, this that that, that 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 nickel's worth of business. You know, is it some toilet paper? I know one time, you know, we we wrestled for six months over fire extinguisher. I just told him, I said, put it in the record. I told you to get the fire extinguisher. Now, if something happened and y'all still voting month after month, the man that said, fire marshal has said, get a fire extinguisher. That's foolishness. Yeah. Foolishness. You got to contend with. But 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 that's what happens because that's the weight of sin and the weight that so easily besets us. us. Five. Mm-hmm. For John truly immersed with water, mm -hmm. but ye shall be immersed with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Okay, I went through all that. So, you got two that were eyewitnesses, Matthew and John, Mark and Luke were not. Right. But now, by all of them receiving the Holy Spirit, then now they are eyewitnesses. Because right. they are they like old Job. Yeah. They're seeing it for themselves and not for another. Mm. And they are able to write. So Billy Graham said, choose the littlest of the books, which is Mark, right. who wasn't even an eyewitness. Right. And that's where you start. That's the second book, three-fourths down in the Bible, the second book, and that's where you should start. So the whole thing is, is that right. we didn't know where to start. Right. Now, supposing we did a search in uh, uh, one of those concordances, uh, give me Genesis. One and one. Give me John one and one. First John one and one. And then Proverbs. No, Proverbs eight and 
what is it, 8 and 20, eight Yahweh 20, possessed 20, me? 8 and 22? Okay, now, if, if, if now, uh, what is it, um, Price is Right, which door? Which is, which is which? Is it Genesis 1 and 1? Woman standing there. Or is it John 1 and 1? Or is it First John? Now she stuck pro Proverbs, Proverbs up there. 8 22. 8. 8 Okay, one of these, one of these, one of these doors, one of these doors, or none of the above, like in the test, none of the above, okay? Where would we go for the beginning? Well, the, the, uh, the, what I'm really thinking about is that one where they say, uh, they, they go and get comments from the audience, mm -hmm. and they, they add them up, <laughs> what is that, Family Feud or something? And they put the big X and they'll say, hot dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. The, the survey majority, says. The survey says <laughs> Genesis 1 and 1. That's what, that's what they're going to say. The majority of people say start at Genesis 1 and 1. Okay. Those that are New Testament creatures, they will say, no, let's start with John 1 and 1. Okay. I don't even know if they will even figure out what 1 John 1, 1 and 1, 1 is. Um, but now, let's consider this. I would want to hear it, as the old folks say, from the horse's mouth. So, get me Proverbs 8 and 22. Yahweh possessed me. Now, this is the me. This is the me that all of these other ones is talking about. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1 and 1 says, to use the uh, King James, in the beginning, God created. First John is, is was with God was God and with God. Mm -hmm. John that that which was he didn't say I was from the beginning. He that, said that which was from the beginning. Now Proverbs said Yahweh possessed what me. That's first person singular. Mm -hmm. This this the one that they were talking about talking. Mm -hmm. Read Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of His way. He possessed me in the beginning of His ways. The moderation said Yahweh knowing. When did He know it? See, we know stuff halfway through. <laughs> That's why we can't figure Yahweh out. We'll get in the car and don't have enough gas to get there. We'll figure out after we get started. We'll start cooking something. And then remember that we was out of it the last time we made that. See, that, 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 and that's what we figure out Yahweh uh, hunting, peck, missing, and patching, and this, and uh, he saw that this, that. No, from the beginning he knew that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state. That was already mastermind. Why? Because he was going to make the man in a state and condition that couldn't. So what did he do? Yahweh took on shape and form right within himself. Now this is, uh, I think one of them comedians, the, the little boy said himself. This is himself talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yahweh possessed me. This is Yahweh, I love him talking. Yahweh possessed me halfway through. In Read. The Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way. Now, I'm gonna have to knock a ball. Yahweh possessed me as number two. In the, in the beginning. Almost from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning. This is the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. Now I'm throwing that out to say, you know, if, if uh, sometimes listen to the elders and, and they become as scarce as hen's teeth folk, we need, to, mm. we need to go back and get some of them old, them old uh, uh, videotapes and audio tapes when we was running, sitting all up on the feet of Gamaliel recording this stuff. Uh, 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 and Because uh, uh, I certainly am going to go back and talk with uh, Dr. Gross and them about it. Uh, when Dr. Kinley wrote the first archetype and was writing those documents, it said that Mary Gross and other people told him, you need to break this thing down. 
and he said that I've made it as simple as I can. That's when they decided, and Dr. William Gross, or Dr. Gross, took it to Wittenberg University and asked that professor to make it simple and, and gave him $100. And according to the story that the professor came and gave the money back in the book back, he said to try to break down one of these words that is, is in this document, I, it would be a paragraph trying to describe the same impact that is said by one word. So Yahweh in this body carefully chose the words that he spoke. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua said, the words that what I speak, they, they are spirit and they, and are, they life. are life. And we can come up with all of this, and this is a new way of looking at it, folk. You're driving off the end of the runway. Your airplane mm -hmm. done drove off the runway ramp. Said Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his ways. This is book, but he was before his works of old. So no, the devil could not be here first. And Yahweh Elohim second. Mm. And I don't know where you get this from. I no, I I I'll say this. We the thought of fighting Tennessee. Mm. We we was the litmus test. It was like the testing ground. You're gonna see if this new drug is gonna work. They brought it to Tennessee. We remember when they said that Yahweh Elohim wasn't in heaven. Boy, we, we took them tooth and nail and oh. sent them on back down the road. And every time they brought that thing, we brought up, sent them back down the road. Then the next time they came, they said, well, he was there, but his light was turned down. Folk, we, I ain't talking about what somebody told me. I'm talking about what the elders done brought down here. And we struck that ball back down the road. Dr. Kelly ain't never talked about had no dimmer switch. Not like that. What he talked about was... Um, he, him and, uh, when he said Moses, he and Moses was in that cloud. It was an inter intermediary meeting state. And because they were human, right. he had to tone that incorporeal down. down. Right. But he didn't have to tone the incorporeal That's down good. to incorporeal angels. Yeah. It was too, because Dr. Kennedy said we were mortal souls right. that were released right. for a while yeah. to be in the yeah. spiritual oh, realm. So, look, if you leave it, like the Father said, we won't be wrong, and our, and our understanding will not be confused. And we can try to correlate it into and all kinds of things, and we can correlate ourselves off the off of the off of the track, because we'll say, well, Cain was born first, then Abel. See, you got the mystery of iniquity, and then you got the righteous. Look, that that, you know, that don't go for back here. Mm. Uh, that don't go for back here. Yahweh Elohim is the firstborn. And he is the first cause. And he has never been an uh, absentee landlord and an absentee father. You ain't had to take him down to probate court no. <laughs> for ownership. Read. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his ways. Possessed me in the very beginning of his ways. Read. Before his works of old. Before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting. Where did I come from? From, from the everlasting, everlasting eternity yes. I was set up. Read. From the beginning. From halfway through. From, from the, the beginning. From the beginning. Or ever the earth was. Or ever the earth was. When there was no death, I was brought forth. Mm -hmm. When there was no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was out. Oh, forth. my goodness. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, mm -hmm. nor the highest part of the dust of the Us. world. When he prepared the heavens, mm -hmm. I was there. That's the angelic mm -hmm. host. I was there. I wasn't absent. And I wasn't dim. Read. When he set a compass upon the face of the death. My goodness, they didn't know nothing about compasses and stuff. Not like we do. Right. You know, they may have known about lodestone, like they used to call it. Right. Yahweh put a compass on the deep. And then when we look at those uh, shows and we, you know, do, do we think about them sometimes, you know? Uh, they had uh, replicas of the of the uh, Nina and the Penta and the Santa Marie. And, and you would have thought that they were big vessels. Some of them weren't much bigger than this, than this den. Wow. And they navigated using compasses mm -hmm. and had faith in that compass. Why? Because it's spiritual.
spirit law. That's right. Yahweh said it. It wasn't going to go so far and all of a sudden a uh, uh, north read south. When Columbus, uh, whether we ain't gonna get no dispute about who did he discover, he said, he sailed west, <laughs> went on down into what it did, and then in his trips, he went on to Hispaniola and stuff. Okay, then whoever came behind him using the same compasses, uh, did not they cross the equator, mm -hmm. and north did not become south, and south become west when they went across the equator. What Yahweh has declared, it ain't gonna flip flop. It ain't gonna be this today and that tomorrow. Therefore, ye sons of, of mm -hmm. Jacob when are what? Not, not consumed. Read. When he established the clouds above, mm -hmm. when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea its decree that the waters should not be his commandment, mm -hmm. when he appointed the foundation of the earth, mm -hmm. then I was by him. As one brought up with him, mm -hmm. and I was daily his delight. Look, it tickled me. Go ahead, rejoicing. rejoicing always mm -hmm. before him, rejoicing in the habit of part of his yes. earth. Mm -hmm. And my delight was with the sons of men. Oh, That's now that right. was that was yes, a mystery. Yes, yes. Many of us didn't even know that there was a Proverbs eight and twenty two, mm -hmm. and who that was really talking. Mm -hmm. And then you got to go over where it says that who being in the form of Elohim. Now that was Elohim talking. So who was in the form of Elohim that strove not equality with Yahweh but what divested himself and took upon himself the form of a servant. All things were created what? By him and what manifestation? In this glorious manifestation. By him and for him. And, and then and with him. There was nothing made, made that was, was made. And we could get into a whole bunch of stuff, yes. but sometimes we need to go back to the old landmark. Ooh, if you've ever yeah. been lost, if you ever been lost in chicken switch, I mean if Felicia was lost in chicken switch. <laughs> uh, something happened. We was trying to get from New Orleans to Baton Rouge and something happened. It was supposed to take 10. Something severely happened. And every time we went to try to go, they took us off a of tin and we just in chicken switch. And see, that's before the days of G GPS. All you got is a paper map. And we go in there and we talk with the truck drivers and stuff, you know, and then somebody say, well, come on, follow me out. And then, now you know Yahweh preserve. Because yes. we in the bayou. We in the bayou. It had just been two dead sisters in the bayou and car down in the swamp. Yeah. And we said, yeah, yeah, come on, take us. And <laughs> he gone loop around and I'm, and I'm saying, man, ain't no houses. We on this narrow road. It's swamp on either side. They never will find us. And when we, and when we came on out, we was on another road. It was a highway. He honked, went his way and put us on that. And you know where we ended back up at? I-10 in New Orleans. Right back where we started from. So if you don't have, if you don't have, and we did that two or three times. Each time we tried to, and it's swamp, so it ain't like you could just take another scale. So we said, hey, this is, maybe it's just, just meant to just not to go there. You got to get a starting point. So what did he do in Luke 24, 25? Here's the starting point we never would have figured out. Go back to Luke uh, 24, 25. Give me John 5, 39. Luke 24 and 25. Because the, uh, the survey says <laughs> Genesis. But this man came in and told us that you got to have an exodus Absolutely. before you have a Genesis. Now, if you had added Exodus, and not only Exodus, two, uh -huh. two, and two, and two. <laughs> uh, and, oh, oh. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> but Yahweh, and it's in there. Get um, John five thirty nine. <laughs> 
He yeah. searched the scriptures. That's what we did, and that's what the, that's what the world is doing. Searching the scriptures, read. For in them you think you have eternal life. And we laugh, and you know, but it, it, it's not funny because we were out there in the same boat. Now some might say I wasn't searching, and I was. It was some of us was. I from junior high school, something struck me. Hey, I need to get an inroad to this God, cause it could be. At the end, if I don't have this inroad, I'll be left. So you, you know right. about that face about being left. Yeah. If you're not in, you miss the school bus, you're left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so some have been searching, others haven't. Don't matter. Yahweh brought us in here and put us on the right path. So we're not mocking. If anything, we happy that right. now we know. The scripture that just like Dr. Smith yeah. had gone through about the, the healing of the blind man, and they just just dragging him all around and trying to make him, they wanted him to make him te to change his testimony. He was fine. Said, I don't know what happened. <laughs> all I, all I, I know, know is, is I was blind. I was blind. Yeah. And now I see. That's all we can say. I was <laughs> blind and now I see. <laughs> John. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. We did. We went over there. Yea, though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And we got more dead boats and hinges on our locks. Even in the old days. We're talking about in the old days. Shoot. In the old days, uh, 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 our parents had locks. You know, they somebody broke in my house uh, way back when. Because in my grandparents' day, all they didn't even have a lock on the back. The extreme, extreme back door just had one nail that was bent over and another oh. nail and a no two nails one on the door one on the wall and another nail run through it <laughs> and, and the feet just blam <laughs> and it was just it was just open <laughs> my mother came she said okay <laughs> she put all kinds of uh, drop bars and stuff don't be telling me about in the old days we didn't have yeah because it was breaking in then. It's just not as, it wasn't as prevalent. Right, yeah. And there were places back then mm -hmm. that we didn't go. I don't need to belabor it. So we played that game. Yea, though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. We knew there were places we better not, better not go. And in, in Cleveland, when I was growing up, it tickled me. The kids could be the them, them young gangsters and stuff. And yeah, I, 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 I. but look, there was a boundary line. You didn't go up on Murray Hill. I was in my 30s when I went up on Murray Hill. That's where the mafia lived up on Murray Hill. Oh no, you didn't stumble up there. And it was a straight street right on up there, but you knew where the cutoff point was. Mm. Playing that game, yeah, though I walked through the valley of the shit. No, uh-uh. Yasha was the only one. Uh, uh, this and the that, and this and the that, and this and the that. And if I do this, and if I keep the law, we thought we had mm. eternal life. Mm -hmm. Read. And they are they which testify of me. We had no way of knowing they testified of Yahshua ya until Yahshua himself came and pointed it out to us. That's why when those people talking about the, uh, the New Testament was a conglomeration of Josephus. and No, uh-uh, uh-uh. Because you know what? They can, they can try to dishonor the so-called New Testament all they want. But uh, I think we left off. Dr. Smith was having us read Psalms 19th Division. Mm -hmm. that, now, what you going to do about the heavens? Because it said the heavens declare okay. the, the glory. glory. Now, now, who, do, how did Josephus work that magic to make the heavens <laughs> declare? Right. Okay, couldn't. That's mm -hmm. why we just say mm -hmm. mm -mm, nothing mm -hmm. like our L. Hallelujah. So that was John said. What? Start again. John 5 and 39. Ye search the scriptures, mm -hmm. for in them ye think ye have eternal life. We had to come in here and understand what scripture was. At the time mm -hmm. the Savior was walking right. the Palestinian hills, there was no New Testament. Right. That's why we, if we had time, just get a good book. Uh, you don't even have to get a book. We say, just go online. Look up Matthew. See when he wrote. Mark mm -hmm. when he wrote. Mm -hmm. John, the last one to do mm -hmm. some writing. And John right. tied up everything. Mm -hmm. You know, look, uh, there's just Yahshua the Messiah mm -hmm. tying up loose ends. Just mm -hmm. like when you crochet and knit, he came back and got all them yeah, drop yeah. stitches. That's what he <laughs> did. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit <laughs> put it all together. And that ended out those so-called four Gospels. Mm -hmm. So, all of that, uh, read. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. The so the the so-called Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and they, they weren't apostles mm -hmm. then. Right, right. 
So how are you going to have an axe? <laughs> Saul hadn't been converted on the road to Damascus, so how are you going to have the books that Saul wrote? Mm -hmm. The only thing they could read to search was the so-called Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi. Okay? So then we didn't even have the right section of the book. But then when we had the right section of the book, we started in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Now, go to Luke 24, 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Mm -hmm. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? He's chiding them. He's chastising them. No, Yahshua, you knew that they couldn't understand what was written in the scriptures because they was using their carnal mind. Read. And beginning at Moses so, and all so, the prophets. So they was twisted up. Like we was twisted up out there in them bayous. <laughs> and the man took us back to New Orleans. He didn't even bother saying that the highway went the other way. He didn't say follow me into the next town. Two, he six. told us, <laughs> y'all go that way. Sent us sisters back. To New Orleans. Did you, like you ain't got good sense. You go back to New Orleans. So Yahshua the Messiah got to take us back to the place where we can get some kind of understanding. Get out of here. <laughs> Read. And beginning at Moses and beginning all the where? prophets. Moses and all the prophets. He expounded on them. Oh my goodness. We, we didn't know that Moses was a prophet. When we say that, I, I like to wonder the vessel say, and I didn't know that. And then it like hit her. She said, I don't think I, I she said, I, I don't think I knew nothing. She says, no, I know I didn't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not saying we didn't know our ABCs and we didn't, but we didn't know how mm -hmm. to rightly Absolutely. divide, mm -hmm. how to apply them with any kind of knowledge. Don't, don't they have, they have um, uh, in the Big Bang Theory. Sh uh, Shelton. Sheldon. Shelton is so arrogant. He is. He is a theoretical physicist. physicist. Theoretical theory. <laughs> it could be an alternative fact mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes down to Absolutely. it. Okay, and he puts down Howard because he is a practical engineer. engineer. What? That which our hands have handled. That's how that's how Howard. He always puts him down. Right. So we have to have a practical application of these scriptures. Read. And beginning at Moses mm -hmm. and all the prophets, mm -hmm. he expounded unto them in all the scriptures. He had to sit them down and give them a practical application. Let's get out the sky. Let's get out of these theories and let's understand what it was all about. Read. The things concerning himself. The things concerning you and me. Because we still are searching the scriptures. The things concerning himself. Go to 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you uh -huh. while I was yet with you. So in other words, he's not changing. He didn't tell them one thing on this side of the cross and then something else after. His death, burial, and resurrection. He's taking a right. These are the things that I spoke to you while I was yet with you. That's a whole nother story. Well, wasn't he with him then? No, he wasn't in a physical body. Well, what do you mean? Didn't he say up there about the flesh and blood? This, you know, they perceived him to be a spirit, and he say, uh, uh, "Look at me. Uh, can't you see uh, a spirit and have not? You know, get that for me, because that's a, that's the whole thing about Doubt and Thomas." Uh, that Thomas touched 39. him, and then they preached that he rose a physical body. And then this, this school, this school, that, that vessel that wrote me that thing about the holy name movement, mm -hmm. printing, didn't, didn't use the name, and it said, and I, I didn't get the name. <laughs> yeah, we had to bring it to me. Um, Angelo Trania. A B trainer. trainer. Who caused A B trainer to put that name in there? Mm -hmm. Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And the person is a Dr. Kendall. You talking about power? Hallelujah. And the world recognizes a change happened at that point, but they don't know who was the hand in the glove mm -hmm. that caused it to be. Mm -hmm. Read. Luke 20, 24 and 38. And he said unto them. 
Why are ye troubled, and why do thoughts arise in your heart? Mm -hmm. Behold my hands mm -hmm. and my feet, that it is I myself. Mm -hmm. Handle me mm -hmm. and see, mm -hmm. for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. Oh my goodness. That, that, that's a hook though. As ye see, see me, me have. have. It is a vision. It is going on within the confines of their mind. Now, Romans 1, 19 and 20. So I'm talking about y'all always using something. Y'all always, look, look. Romans 1, 19 and 20. For Yahweh has what shown it unto them. Mm -hmm. It is manifest outside of them. In them. In them. That's the revelation is in you. When he shows you. Something tangible to lead you to a spiritual understanding. I thank Yahweh that as I got older, I have less and less, less and less nightmares. I had a bad one. I woke myself up. Hollering and running. I woke up because somebody was hollering. <laughs> and it was me. <laughs> and all the bed clothes were twisted up where I had been running and yeah, thrashing and tangled up in my sleep. You know, and fortunately, whatever was after me that bad, he didn't bring it back to my remembrance. But that was all happening within the confines of my mind. And I was reacting to it as if it was an external manifestation. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the way I was taught. That's what I was taught by the, by the old deans. Dreams show you how visions happen. And you react to them as if they are external. But they are internal. And the key is, as you see me have. Mm -hmm. The two at the, resu at the ascension. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing mm -hmm. upwards? This same Yahshua shall appear in what? Like manner. And, they, and the world says he went up physically in the cloud. No, no. he went up visionary from their sight. Mm -hmm. And so he has to appear visionary. That's mm -hmm. what this teaching is done. Mm -hmm. So the, I'm going to cut off there and leave it for the next speaker. But the whole point is beginning where? At Moses. You go to, then you go to Exodus. No, you go to Exodus 1, mm -hmm. you can read all of 1, mm -hmm. you ain't going to read nothing but about the death decree, right. and the Pharaoh mad and put out a death decree. You go over to Exodus 2 and 1, mm -hmm. and you got to get all the way down to 2 and 2, and it says, They went a man to the house of Levi, and took the wife and daughter of Levi, and she, and she conceived and bare son. Boom! There he is. There's Moses. <laughs> Exodus 2 and 2. Mm -hmm. That's your beginning point. Mm -hmm. Why? Over in Psalms it says he made his ways known unto, unto the Moses. children, unto Moses, his, his acts. acts unto the children of yeah. Now look, when children, when we are children, I put it on me. And my mother used to do some strange things. And when we was real, real little, we'd go to the oh, whoever was the oldest one and say, What is wrong with her? Why is she doing that? See, we saw the acts. <laughs> But we didn't know the way. <laughs> we didn't know the meaning behind the actions that we that we were seeing. Mm -hmm. Moses had the who, what, where, when, and how right. of what Yahweh was doing. The children of Israel just saw it. Oh, went through the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Moses knew that that was salvation. Right. All of this. The first one to receive the name at the burning bush. The one that received uh, uh, how Yahweh mm -hmm. act. The one that was called up in the mount and saw all the way down to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit or from beginning to end so that when he came down, his face shone. He was lit up. He had a revelation. He had been, he was glorified. Mm -hmm. Had been in the presence of Yahweh. That's why we got to begin with that man because it's through that man that we even get the survey says Genesis 1 and 1. <laughs> with those words, I thank you. Hallelujah. Our next speaker will be Dr. Daphne Thomas. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I truly enjoy uh, class this afternoon, this Hallelujah. morning. Even beginning with the prayer. It was, it was such a humble prayer. Uh, praying for those who have a desire to be among us but cannot. And 
praying for us to come to an even greater understanding and appreciation of our Creator Yahweh. And uh, the prayer just struck me so deeply. And then the previous vessel to get up on the floor and talk about in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because that always seems to be a natural point to start. <laughs> it's in the beginning. And, uh, you know, I had to come down here to this class, and it, it is an honor and a privilege, you know. We say it by rote, but it's, it's, it's heartfelt uh, yeah, to be able to say anything right. about Yahweh and truth and reality because we know that we didn't come upon this mm -hmm. out of ourselves. Right. <laughs> so many people have testified, you know. Uh, the previous lesson we talking about the ones who get up and testify how they, they, they declared, <laughs> you know, that they would never, ever, ever, ever come back to this place. And they catch themselves just getting up and getting dressed and coming on back down mm -hmm. here. Because over there in the book, in it, somewhere it says, for I'm a prisoner mm -hmm. of Yahshua the Messiah. And we, and Yahweh has put people on these floors to testify to us mm -hmm. how they are a prisoner mm -hmm. of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So there was, and you, they're not coming in here. Bound and changed, you know, <laughs> and shackled and manacled and everything. But they are, when they say they are bound or they are a prisoner, it's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. There's a spiritual uh, operation. You, are, They are operating by spirit law. Mm -hmm. And that is just their testimony. You know, on the surface, this thing was just so diametrically opposed to everything we've been taught. You know, and, and they're just like, this this is, I just can't come back down here anymore. And then they're, they're standing on the floor telling us how mm -hmm. they could come back down here anymore. And they're down here. And that's just showing the power of Yahshua the Messiah. How the previous vessel said that facts cannot keep us. They cannot. You know, it's not about facts and figures and, 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 and you and I love correlating. Because to me, it's taking that, that Yahweh's creation and it's, it's pointing to the creator. That is how Yahweh, you know, the previous verse is beautiful about those different tones mm -hmm. and timbers and mm -hmm. forces and how they all come together to sing one song. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we grew up in the black church. We knew how them big choirs get up there and they a little bit here. Then another thing <laughs> could take a third of them. Mm -hmm. They all come together and you're waiting. On that big climax when they all <laughs> singing at the same time. Because you know they're building to a crescendo. Mm -hmm. To sing a common song. To see all those different parts come together. And to make that one harmony. Mm -hmm. And that is what we witness in these classes. I mean, mm -hmm. me coming in in 91, that's what I witnessed. Mm -hmm. Yahweh put all manner of folk on floor. Mm -hmm. All various gifts. Mm -hmm. Some people, uh, we got one, uh, uh, Dr. Hamilton. He loves those old prophets. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can run them two ones I've right. never heard of. I didn't know they were in the book. And I was down here years and years and years. And he'd get up here and run those prophets. And just, just open up the book. And it's been sitting in our laps all along. That's, a, that's that, you know, he might be coming in as a baritone. Mm -hmm. Then you get uh, Olivia get up here and run that body, that mm -hmm. physical Creation and Romans 119. That's that lyric soprano coming in and doing that part. Mm -hmm. Then you get uh, Dr. Smith to come up here and put this stuff in the most practical of terms and applications to life. Going in that old part of the book and preaching about how their walk and their steps were ordered. According to the pattern and to, according to the gospel. That's, a, that's that alto coming in there. And at the end of the day when we, you know, uh, uh, go to the last two chapters of the book of Jude. <laughs> now. Now unto him. <laughs> we make that declaration. Who is able to keep you faultless. Keep you from falling. Present you faultless. Once we get to that point. Mm -hmm. All the parts have come mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we have received a beautiful mm -hmm. song and it has <laughs> resonated in mm -hmm. our hearts and we leave here walking on air from a spiritual standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is just that powerful. And we come here, so you know, and people, I know folks, I can only speak for my family, I can't speak for yours. Mm -hmm. I know when I'm not around, they wonder, how does she get all hung up in that stuff? <laughs> You know, and how has she stayed in it? 
you know, they oh, figured and fears. hoped and prayed mm -hmm. that it was Still a phase, <laughs> you know, that I was going through because I met the Get wrong man, it. you know, that's what they thought, they blamed it on my ex-husband. <laughs> she met that man and he took her away. Nobody has that kind of power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you can't give him too much credit. The man mm -hmm. that took me away was Yahshua the Messiah. I was mm -hmm. one here, but that's him. Mm -hmm. And him, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. we started getting deep. We started pouring back then. Mm -hmm. But Yahshua the Messiah is the power of his spirit. And it's manifested by his gospel. Mm -hmm. That, when I start hearing that song, that's when my ear mm -hmm. of understanding just perks up. You know, you, even when you're listening to your TV, you start hearing, you know. And, and we were taught coming in this school to watch the earth plane. Because Yahweh is, is operating in the greater and more perfect tabernacle of the earth or the creation or the universe. Mm -hmm. So watch these things because he's speaking and he's mm -hmm. broadcasting to those who have an mm -hmm. ear to yes. hear. Mm -hmm. Now from Romans 1 and 19, that's like a radio. A radio is nothing but a receiver. Right. And your receiver is only as good as your antenna. Is mm -hmm. that right? That's right. That's right. And you can have a big old boss stereo system, mm -hmm. but if you got a cheap antenna, you're going to get a cheap signal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you're going to get a cheap return. Mm -hmm. And so... Yahweh has given us the most sensitive, fine-tuned antenna mm -hmm. that are spiritual. Mm -hmm. So when we hear him work, some folks just hearing the news. We're hearing so much more. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. hearing our creator operating mm -hmm. in, his, in his universe. And he's speaking to us. You know, when I was coming up in the 80s, you know, they had that heavy metal music. Mm -hmm. And they were putting out that it's got hidden messages and yeah, all this yeah. old foolishness, you know. <laughs> and you play it backwards and say another thing. It's all about mm -hmm. the devil and all of that. But, you know, we come down here to find out. <laughs> what is it? The heavens mm -hmm. declare the glory of air. There's nothing hidden about that. It's out for the whole world to see. <laughs> Is it not? Then he put it on the world wide web. Mm -hmm. And everybody, anybody who can who can just hook in can have access to this. And that's the beauty of it. Because it used to be, you know, confined to our little bitty classes. Mm -hmm. And you know, we used to get some people who would just happen to walk by and just, boy, what y'all doing up in here? Mm -hmm. You know, and take a seat. We like, woo, y'all is working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blew somebody up in here. Yeah, we just looking. I wonder if it's going to catch, you know, yep, they're going to yep. come back. And a lot of times they didn't come back. But you, we, the, the, the power is Yahweh is speaking. Then you get the internet, and he's just speaking to people all over the world. People who've never set foot in a class stumble upon our video mm -hmm. and make comments. And I'm like, ooh, Yahweh, that's power right there. So is it facts and figures that's keeping them? That you know, uh, uh, piques their interest? No. It's Yahshua the Messiah speaking and resonating in their hearts. Now, how does he do that? Um, we read over there, what, what got me when we read the scripture lesson today was how he opened up their understanding. Mm -hmm. We always talk about mm -hmm. how he, and beginning at Moses, mm -hmm. but there's a, 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 a part over in there that we, we don't read when we're in class, we're talking about how he broke bread. Right. And then, mm -hmm. if you'll get that uh, that verse for me, please. Luke 20, 24, 28. Mm -hmm. And they drew near unto the village to which they went. Then and on he, to Emmaus, read. And he made as though he would have gone far. Oh, you love me. He was like, all right, y'all. I see y'all. Y'all go ahead on. Peace in y'all. You know. And, he, and they said, no, no, no. Don't go. Stay mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. Tarry with us. And they were enjoying the lesson. Because mm -hmm. he had, remember now, he went right. over into the scriptures, right. exactly. which they had had mm -hmm. all their lives. Mm -hmm. with no New Testament preachers. Let's just taught you that. Mm -hmm. No Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and so forth. Okay, so he was over there dealing with Genesis to Malachi with them as they were walking. You know, back over there in Exodus when Moses did this, and then that, that's what that meant. That's so how they were. Intrigued. So when he acted like he was about to leave, they're like, no, <laughs> stay. Read. 
But they constrained him, saying, oh. Abide with us. Yeah. For it is toward even. It's getting dark. And you might as well go on stay with us the rest of the evening. Mm -hmm. Read. And the day is far spent. Mm -hmm. And he went in to tarry with them. Okay, I'll hang out with y'all a little while longer. Go on. And it came to pass Read. as he sat eating with them. Uh huh. He took bread. Read. And blessed it. Mm. And broke it. Read. And gave it to them. And gave it to them. He's sharing. Now, back over there in Exodus, get over there 24, I think. Chapter went up, or is it 12? Then went up. Yes, then went up. Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. That's it. Exodus 24, 9. Okay. <clears throat> then went up Moses mm -hmm. and Aaron. Read. Nadab. And Abihu mm -hmm. and seventy of the elders of Israel. Now they're in uh, they're in the wilderness of Sinai. They come to and through the waters, the divided waters of the Red Sea, mm -hmm. and they ascended up into the wilderness of Sinai. And so now they're encamped around the mountain here, mm -hmm. but they got to get into an elevated state, okay? Because y'all always getting ready to deal with them, okay? So he says, and he told Moses, come up. Unto me, Moses, and then Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. And who's Aaron? That's his brother, who's a Levite, who will one day be a high priest. Is that not right? The mm -hmm. first high priest. Mm -hmm. And you would, that's amazing, the fact that he would be the first high priest out of the way he clowned out here. Mm -hmm. Because he had no understanding. He, had, he did not have Joshua in him. But anyway, you have Aaron, and Nadab, and Abihu are his two sons, right? And they're the first two what? Low no priests. Priest. Okay, so that's setting up the, the Levitical priesthood right there. They're going up into an elevated state, and then they took 70 of the elders with them. Read. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now the previous vessel went in in deep, great detail about over there in Proverbs, Yahweh possessed me in the what? Beginning, Beginning of his way. Set him up from everlasting and it said again what from the beginning so they're seeing Yahweh Elohim previous vessel talked about how when Yahshua was dealing with them over there in Luke he said well look at me handle me then see it that those two spirits have flesh and blood as I have they're having a vision see that's it, it takes a vision to straighten out verbs okay over there in Proverbs it said without uh, a vision, a prophetic vision, let's get it right, the people perish. what? Perish. And he even made a president quote that one time in a speech. You know, we were all like, did y'all hear that? Clinton quoted that. We, we take personal ownership of some of this stuff. <laughs> you know, we're like, what is he doing? Just Yahweh showing forth his purpose and his power, his pattern and his plan uh, of salvation. Gonna make a president <laughs> quote some we we quoted nearly every Sunday we would have that read where there is no prophetic vision what mm -hmm. the people perish right. to show us just like the founder even reading his vision pam pamphlet talked about how he blacked out on June the 6th and he had a divine vision and then he blacked out again and what had the what divine revelation how he went into great detail about what he what heard and saw okay so he okay so he had a prophetic vision this when he said and when he had that vision he was what the same man he was on june never, 5th. never no, more. no more i will never no more be the same so now they all go up here and they saw the elohim of israel now this is a super Incorporeal being. I didn't know anything about incorporeal till it came down here and I was grown. Now I heard of corpses, you know, a corpse is a dead body, physical dead body. This is incorporeal, so that means it's not physical. So they saw something that was not physical. If it's not physical, it's a spiritual being. And you got 73, well, with Moses and his minister Yahshua, that's 75, isn't it? And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Read on. And they saw the Elohim of Israel, and mm -hmm. there was under his feet, as it were, 
a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Now, all these folks are seeing this, okay, they're having a vision. Read. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. he laid not his hand. He did not touch them. Just like over in Luke, he, he tells them what? Handle me, but did mm -hmm. they ever touch him? No. No. They're having a vision. So he laid not what? His hand. Read. But well, go on. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. Got to talk about some eating and mm -hmm. drinking. So mm -hmm. when he comes down here mm -hmm. in Luke, mm -hmm. come on now. When we say mm -hmm. jot and tell us mm -hmm. what all mm -hmm. things, and then he tell he ends the, the, the encounter to what? All things must be what? Fulfilled. Fulfilled. You know, we, we look up the word fulfilled. It has so many meanings. One of them is what? Bring to an end. Bring to its conclusion. Bring into effect. Okay, so if he's with them by means of a vision in the village of Emmaus, and they what? Break bread, they mm -hmm. eat, and they drink. Why? Because back here. Because I, I used to wonder, what did, you, first of all, ain't nobody said nothing about taking no picnic up right, here right. on Mount Sinai. All it says is they went mm -hmm. and they saw and all of a sudden they eating and drinking right. what was on the menu. <laughs> so when he's down here with them, what he's breaking bread, mm -hmm. he has to break bread with them to fulfill. Mm -hmm. They got it. They ate and drank with him here. They got to eat and drink. This is down here is being fulfilled mm -hmm. physically, mm -hmm. but they're still having a vision. Is right. that not right? Mm -hmm. And then they were understood. Right. Well, I wonder, is it because he might have hooked that up for him? See, I did this back here. Mm -hmm. When I took Aaron, Nadab, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and Moses, we ain't drank back there. Y'all get it now? <laughs> Institution mm -hmm. fulfilled. they like, oh! Okay, we got it. What else is says there? And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Read. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. And did eat and drink. It's some more there, I think. And Yahweh said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Come up to me into the mount and be there. And be there, read. And I will give thee tables of stone. Mm -hmm. Now he started to tell him about the law. Now we go on back in there and you read back on through Exodus. What, what amazed me coming into this class, they used to teach us because this chart is color-coded. Okay, remember the previous verse was talking about the green mm -hmm. on this side of Jordan and that side of Jordan right. signified the inheritance. Right. Although they didn't get theirs first, they all had to get it at the same mm -hmm. time. Everybody had to gird their lawns and go over the river Jordan and fight. Mm -hmm. And win the battle, which Yahweh fought for them. And then comes the inheritance. Mm -hmm. Well, over here on this side, over here in this section of the chart, you see this white area. That is signifying a vision. Mm -hmm. And see, they all see this. That's the Elohim of Israel. Mm -hmm. But, this is where they were cut off. These right here mm -hmm. were cut off, and this is all they saw. Mm -hmm. And they saw this, and they ate and drank, and they comprehended it no. not. <laughs> How do we know that? Because of what they did after they saw it. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the difference between Moses? Because he, he told Moses, well, come up. Did mm -hmm. he not say that? Because mm -hmm. he had to come up a little higher. Right. You know, and I, it would, what got me one time, they was like, how Yahshua get to go? <laughs> he wasn't on the guest list. What? He was the one doing the inviting. Mm -hmm. How did a young man get to be the minister of an 80-year-old man? And that's the kind of stuff that we just, you know, just throw out down here at this school. So, Yahshua was the one did the inviting. So, he took Moses on up a little bit higher and he transfigured into Yahweh Elohim. Now, how do we know that? Because Moses is in a much more elevated state, so he sees Yahweh Elohim, and then the next thing he sees is his tabernacle pattern. What? What does this have to do with this? What does this tabernacle pattern have to do with the creation? Then the previous vessel just show you 
talking about Yahshua the Messiah and his and the significance of four and forty and four hundred. Mm -hmm. And then how people, you know, they, they have these questions in the world because this is how they say this really didn't happen like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they say, how did the seed of vegetation come through on the <laughs> third day before the sun was hung in the heavens on the mm -hmm. fourth day? Right. But when you go back to the beginning, it tells you that <laughs> he said what? Let there be what? Light. And it sure was light. <laughs> so that was already light. Mm -hmm. So when the the seed of vegetation coming through on the third day is talking about it, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. How that that seed, the seed of Abraham, had to come to and through the waters of the divided Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And on the third day arrived mm -hmm. in the wilderness of Sinai. You read in where does it say and been getting that Moses? That's why he went to Moses. That's where all this stuff is. Because on that third day, what did he tell me? He told him to clean up. Because mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they had to get ready to get married. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> now, I didn't even know that stuff. I didn't know from waiting back here. I had First no time. idea. Mm -hmm. And then they even took vows. Mm -hmm. Did they not? Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. It's like, all that Yahweh mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. what we will do. Mm -hmm. And be obedient. Be obedient. We hung up and be obedient. That's that obedient part that got them tripped up. And that's why when it's so much. That's why when Moses went up here, he had to get a what? A law. To govern the people. Is that not right? But see, Yahweh is working. He was set up from the beginning. Before ever the earth was. So Moses is up here in a more highly elevated state, and he's seeing Yahweh Elohim. He sees the tabernacle pattern, and then he sees Yahweh Elohim again, and then he sees the creation comes come through. Now, what got me when it, when it comes to going into this book, because I had no idea, because I what well, I'm just like the rest of the world. I thought, see this. First of all, I didn't realize he did, went up here three times. That's the other thing. That got me that that significance of three. Three is complete. He came up here three times, and he saw this, and then he saw the uh, the seven days of the creation, and then he went back again, and Yahweh had to recapitulate that thing, show it again, and then bring it all the way out, and then show him the making of the tabernacle. And I had to come down here to find out that he spent more time yes. showing him. Mm -hmm the tabernacle pattern than he did on the creation. Because mm -hmm. see, this was the, we said in seven, what, solar days, the mm -hmm. evening and the morning, what the first day. So we're thinking, your, your, your carnal mind is going to think literally seven days. Mm -hmm. So seven days in Moses is what? Vision. Vision. Mm -hmm. Is that not right? Mm -hmm. Right. He's telling you day by day mm -hmm. while he's caught up with Yahweh, mm -hmm. what's going on? Right. So in the evening, in the morning, right. was the first day. Then he tells you what comes the second day. Right. Then the evening, in the mm -hmm. morning, for the second day. The mm -hmm. second day I'm up here, y'all, and I'm mm -hmm. having a vision with Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So they say, they're saying, they say, this is impossible for the entire earth to be created in, in <laughs> six solar days. Then you, because you don't understand that Moses is what having a vision. vision. See, that's what what confounds the world. Yeah. But when you understand what a divine vision and a revelation is, then you start to see why this is coming in on day one, mm -hmm. the way it is. Day two, day three, because then he's going to, one of them, he went through the building or the design and the, mm -hmm. or the specifications right. for the tabernacle pattern. Spent more days on that. What was it? Mm -hmm. 33. Is that not right? right. Seven. On the creation, he was up there 40 days, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. seven on the creation, and then he the other 33 days on the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. now, now, if you just want to go back time mm -hmm. spent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the subject, mm -hmm. <laughs> this seems a whole lot more important and more intricate. And if you go down there and read. <laughs> This kind of stuff that used to just get me. See, you know, we say facts and all that holds, you know, it's Yahshua the Messiah. Because some of the stuff that they have they, they, they taught in school would confound the world. Mm -hmm. That has been in there talking about just the vessels inside mm -hmm. his knops mm -hmm. and his yes. dishes and his what? What? Yes. Why? Did they put a pronoun right. 
on an inanimate, inanimate object. object. Right. So these kind of questions we ask. Human now. pronoun. Yeah, human pronoun. You mm -hmm. don't, you know now. It's. <laughs> Affectionately, we do that for boats. Mm -hmm. She. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, colleges and universities are female. You know, alma mater means what? Our mother. Mm -hmm. So we do that mm -hmm. affectionately for certain inanimate objects in language, especially in poetry and all that stuff. But over in here, this is way back <laughs> here, long before the birth of Yahshua Messiah from the loins of the Virgin Mary, and they're putting a male pronoun on inanimate objects like dishes and tables and mm -hmm. candlesticks mm -hmm. and like, mm -hmm. why? Mm -hmm. That's what got me. I said, okay, you know, all right, first of all, I didn't know it was in there. And then I didn't, <laughs> then he had given the question, gave me an answer before he gave me the question. Mm -hmm. It's talking about who? Yahshua the Messiah. That's why he spent so much time on this. Mm -hmm. See, they didn't, they missed that day of school. Mm -hmm. Did they not? They were dismissed <laughs> him early. Were they not? Yes. Yes. It's in the book. I'm not making that up. They yeah. got to go yeah. home. You, y'all, yeah. please yeah. now. They yeah. left yeah. there. Yeah. They saw something stupendous, yeah. but they didn't stay long enough yeah. to get in and <laughs> understand. Okay? So, when they left school early, they left before lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They get y'all who on that. They come down to build a golden calf, mm -hmm. a four-legged mm -hmm. beast. Mm -hmm. Well, where did they see that before? That's the other thing that got me. Mm -hmm. We're down in Egypt a long time, mm -hmm. a couple hundred years. That, that's all that long time. Mm -hmm. So they built what they knew. They didn't build what they saw. Right. See Moses, <laughs> you know, he got an extended mm -hmm. lecture. So he saw this, then he saw the tabernacle pattern mm -hmm. and going into his knots and his dishes and his spoons and his, his spoons, spoons, everything, mm -hmm. his bowls mm -hmm. and all of that because he gonna, he's going to receive the revelation mm -hmm. of this right here because he used this mm -hmm. to explain this. This is a stupendous thing, a spiritual being, mm -hmm. just like with Noah. Noah said it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. Everybody thought he was insane. Why? <laughs> now, if I say it's going to rain, you'd be thinking, well, she, well, she must have looked on weather.com. Because mm -hmm. we have all seen rain before. Mm -hmm. It never rained on the face of the earth when Noah mm -hmm. said that. Why? Because he had had a what, prophetic mm -hmm. vision from mm -hmm. Yahweh. And he stuck to that mm -hmm. one testimony right. and built the boat for 120 years. Just like we preach for 120 minutes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So he stuck to that even though he had never seen rain and nobody else had ever seen rain. But he had a divine vision and revelation straight from Yahweh. So, so did Moses. And it's, the tabernacle pattern mm -hmm. is what explained what he saw mm -hmm. here. Broke it all the way down. It's talking about the Godhead. Come here, come down here and find out that there was a Godhead. Okay? And that, you know, and that it wasn't a trinity. So the whole world is saying, and when then they start backing up after we've been preaching it for 50 years, mm -hmm. then they go, well, okay, maybe not trinity, it's triune. You. <laughs> triune, three yet one. Wait a minute. Now, <laughs> you know, that's the power of Yahweh as a right. tabernacle pattern. They can't dispute this right. because what he showed him was the tabernacle pattern is a most holy place, a holy place with a court mm -hmm. round about. It's three parts but one sanctuary. When he uh, showed him the, the days of the creation, three parts, he said it was the, uh, like on the fourth day when he said the, the, the sun in the sky for the day and the moon for the night. Did he leave it there? No, it's got to be three parts. No, there was the twilight in the midst, in between. Mm -hmm. So you got the day, the night, and the what? Twilight. Mm -hmm. One, two, three parts of the day, but what? One, One day. day. Now, he broke down every day of the creation like mm -hmm. that. Okay? Mm -hmm. By a pattern. Because he wouldn't have understood any of this if he didn't have the tabernacle <laughs> pattern. So what did Yahweh and the body do? When he had a divine vision and revelation, 
besides taking two years mm -hmm. to even, this was his first chart. This was got me. And his first chart has tables and it has plates on mm -hmm. it. Because when you have a vision, there's going to be some eating. And drinking. Is that not right? Did right. they not eat drink right. back here? Mm -hmm. Did they not eat drink in Luke in the village mm -hmm. of Emmaus? Mm -hmm. So when he built his, he drew out these charts. They're designed where you can eat and drink off of them. Mm -hmm. So they got they got a table with plates on it. Mm -hmm. And each plate is divided in three sections. Right. One, two, three. Yep. One plate. Mm -hmm. Did what Yahshua did? That Yahweh Elohim did back here with Moses. He showed him. The, the creation in seven days and three parts to each day. Even in the morning were the first day. Mm -hmm. Even in the morning were the second day. That throws everybody. Because people, mm -hmm. if they don't know he's having a vision, then they don't understand mm -hmm. what he's talking about here. And then don't even try to get with John on the Isle of Patmos because <laughs> he's seeing it from this end going that way. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't have the, the tabernacle pat, and y'all, it's like, Mirror images almost. Mm -hmm. You got Moses here. What does he see? First thing he sees is what? Yahweh mm -hmm. Elohim. Mm -hmm. You got John back here. You see this white? That means mm -hmm. he's having a vision. Mm -hmm. What is the first thing he sees? He sees mm -hmm. Yahweh Elohim. And he, he's in full, as we say, in college, mm -hmm. full regalia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's got all his robes of beauty and glory, but still, mm -hmm. who? Yahweh Elohim. And what's the next thing he sees? Mm -hmm. Is the tabernacle pattern. Mm -hmm. But the difference mm -hmm. here yes. is it's uncovered. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Now look here. Mm -hmm. It's covered. Mm -hmm. It's covered here. Mm -hmm. But here, John is coming from the other end. Only Yahweh mm -hmm. may do this. Mm -hmm. That's why he calls the book Revelation. Mm -hmm. Revelation means what? Mm -hmm. To reveal. Mm -hmm. So here's the tabernacle. Here's the sanctuary. It's open. That veil is what? They call it what? Rent in twain. It said from the top to the bottom, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? So you can see all the way up from, see, you can see that here. We're in the practical application of it. When it was out here, mm -hmm. all this was obscured, was it not? By veils. Mm -hmm. You know what a veil is? You see those when you can still see them today. Oh, let's just bring it to America. When a, when a bride gets married, mm -hmm. usually, she comes out and she has a veil over her face. Mm -hmm. That's to obscure her. She's supposed mm -hmm. to be pure and mm -hmm. virginal. Mm -hmm. And it is her husband that does the revealing. You know, mm -hmm. we don't do it like we're supposed to. Now they, now they got the veil running all behind <laughs> on their faces. And you know, it's just, they don't understand the significance right. of that. It used to be sh the bride would come out fully veiled. And they would go through all the, 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 the I do's and so mm -hmm, forth. And mm -hmm. then what would happen? You would have to be revealed on the revelation. Mm -hmm. That husband would what? Open up. Mm -hmm. And reveal his bride. I, we don't even know why we do this stuff. That's right. We don't even know what the ceremony is about. That's why I've been to weddings. And she don't even have a veil on. Her veil is just pillowing behind and dragging train 40 feet long. You don't even understand. What a veil is and what it's for and the significance. Right. It is to cover mm -hmm. the bride and her virginal state. Mm -hmm. right. Just like Yahweh roll the waters back. Mm -hmm. Come on now. There's an unveiling. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we call it? An unveiling. Mm -hmm. Here's the bride unveiled. Mm -hmm. This is John mm -hmm. the revelator. He's seeing Yahweh in his robes of beauty and glory. It's a glorified state here. They didn't see that. They came down here, these seven three folks came down here and made a, a <laughs> golden calf, a bull, after a god they learned about in Egypt. Okay? And he, he punished them for that too. And what did he do? You know, Yahweh is, can be kind of cold. What did he do? He said, all right, all right, all right. Because see, I know what the end going to be. The end uh, is that my purpose and pattern and plan of salvation is to be what? In you. Did the previous vessel not say that that was his glory? And to enter into his glory, showing him here. She said, this is not even his glory here. This is at the Mount of Transfiguration. It says vision. They're having a, you see the little white, the little white here? That means they're having a vision. 
Okay? That's not even his glory. His glory is on the day of Pentecost. When he reigns down and said, and he told him, stay right here. Mm -hmm. Like that man got them out of chicken switch and sent, <laughs> sent them back to New Orleans to the Ark of Safety for civilization. Stay right here in Jerusalem. Don't be wandering all around chicken switch. Because <laughs> I have a, an appointment with you. Stay here in Jerusalem until you are endued upon high. Why? Because that is when he's going to enter into his glory mm -hmm. and pour out the Holy Spirit into those bodies. Okay? Isn't that what a man that, you know, values his children? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that day they, they're his glory. Mm -hmm. And when they come here, he's looking for himself, isn't mm -hmm. he? Not that they, they want to look like him and act like him right. and all of that. Because that's his glory. So Yahshua Messiah's glory is when he pours out the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and he puts it in bodies. So he fixed them back here mm -hmm. when they made their God. What did he do? He ground it down to powder, powder. the, the gold, the and strewn it and on the drink. water and made them drink mm -hmm. the water mm -hmm. that was strewn with the gold, mm -hmm. the pulverized gold from this <laughs> can, mm -hmm. and said, okay, now you have your God what? In you. In you. Because, see, he knew from, he was set up or from everlasting to everlasting, what is that? From the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so he knew from the beginning when he manifested in this state, and we used to teach this, he went out of the what? Creation business mm -hmm. as Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And he came in as Yahweh Elohim. And then he, in this manifestation, mm -hmm. did the work. Is that not right? And he knew what the end was going to be as soon as he stepped forth. He said, what well, I declared is what? The end, what? From, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how can you declare an end mm -hmm. from the beginning unless you are at the beginning? Mm -hmm. See, this is without controversy. I don't even know some of this stuff we're fighting over. I'm like, when they start revealing some of these things, I'm like, we could not have gotten this twisted up now. <laughs> Yahweh is too simple. And too consistent. If nothing else, what he says so again, did somebody quoted earlier, so Jacob, the, the sons of Jacob were well, not, not consumed. consumed. Mm -hmm. Over there in Isaiah, I overturn it, overturn it, right. overturn it. Mm -hmm. And it's all about his glory. They missed it here. They were dismissed and didn't get this. The pattern, the tabernacle pattern, because it's all talking about him. That's why it's his knots and his bowls and all this old stuff. Mm -hmm. It's talking about him, Yahweh Elohim, when he gets in a body. It's Yahshua the Messiah, but these three what? Are one. When we start doing this, and this we're talking about manifestations at this point, but it's one spirit, Yahweh. And when he gets in this, he's in the creating business. You see him down here, he's in the saving business. Is that not right? Mm -hmm. But it, and he tells you of the lamb slain from, from the, the foundation of the world. world. So that was a death coming to a gross form. And he made he died for his bride before he even brought her forth. All right. Oh my goodness. Paid the price. He paid. <laughs> he said he paid it all. It's all to him all I owe. This was a death. So that we could have eternal life. And he and when he took our and this and I say this and be down. This, these charts, everything on this chart is here for a reason. It all means something. Nothing is superfluous. Nothing is for decoration. It all has meaning. You look at this serpent. He's signifying that negative spirit, right? The devil, Satan, or the adversary. Mm -hmm. And he's cut off right here at the cross. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because here is where he took off the flesh. And this is his domain, the flesh. Mm -hmm. Carnality. He lost Yahshua. Here he's been looking for him ever since. Why do you think the, uh, the Holocaust happened? Mm -hmm. And it just so happened at the same time Dr. Mm -hmm. Kelly had the vision. Mm -hmm. He knew it was time for Yahshua to get on That's the scene right. in a body. So he went back to Jerusalem. Let me kill some, a bunch of Jews and let's mm -hmm. see if I can catch him. He put down a drag net just like Herod did. Did right. he not? Right. He lost him here. Because see, once he entered into his glory, getting in all these bodies, this is what the devil was trying to stop. And so you can't deny the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you do that, you're putting him to...
to an open shame, and this was all for the light. We are down here preaching the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, and our testimony, when you depose us, is supposed to be one thing. Yahshua the Messiah is mm -hmm. in the flesh. That's <laughs> our testimony. Mm -hmm. When you depose us, and we will be deposed, we got one testimony, and it better be consistent. Yahshua is here. His previous uh, vessel used to always say, him is fear, him is here. Mm -hmm. Is that not right? Mm -hmm. So I hope something got something. Somebody got something out of it. Something that was said. Hallelujah. 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 This concludes our lecture for uh, today. Are there any announcements? Let us stand by doxology. Our doxology is taken from Jude, verse 24, 25. <clears throat> now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, hallelujah. Okay. Thank you.